although surface water is mostly contaminated, we need this source for drinking water production. Welcome! Today I will give an introduction to the direct treatment of surface water for the production of drinking water. After this lecture, you will have an impression of the developments in the direct surface water treatment and the influence of different steps on the final drinking water quality. Service water is one of the resources for drinking water production and is used when sufficient fresh groundwater isn't available. In the Netherlands this is the case in the densely populated coastal area. Here large rivers and lakes can supply sufficient fresh water while groundwater abstraction on a large scale would result in the upconing of brackish and salt water. However, Disadvantages of surface water as source for drinking water production are the contamination by solids resulting in turbidity, by pathogenic microorganisms and chemicals such as heavy metals, pesticides and pharmaceuticals. In addition, the water quality, including the temperature, is varying over the year and is sensitive to calamities. Therefore, surface water needs extensive treatment including storage in reservoirs and disinfection. Service waters can be treated in three different ways. During direct treatment the service water is taken in, stored in a reservoir for several months and then passed through a treatment plant. An alternative is that the water is first pre-treated to remove turbidity, infiltrated in an aquifer and then post-treated. Finally, water can be taken in from the river banks abstracting indirectly the water from the river. This river bank groundwater is then treated to produce safe drinking water. Today we will focus on direct service water treatment. Direct treatment of service water is preceded by storage in reservoirs. These reservoirs have different functions. First, they are needed for analysis. When river water is contaminated, some time is needed to measure it in the laboratory. After feedback, the abstracted river water can be discharged without contaminating the rest of the stored water. Second, the reservoirs have a storage function. As, a, as long as the river remains contaminated, the stored water can be used without interrupting the drinking water supply. Obviously, during this period the level of the reservoirs will drop. Finally, the reservoirs have a purification function, so-called auto-purification. High salt concentrations will be leveled off due to mixing. Suspended solids will settle. Gas and heat will be exchanged with the atmosphere. Organic matter will be broken down and anthropogenic pathogenic microorganisms will decay. From the water quality table it can be concluded that for example the average electrical conductivity as an indication of salt content, remains the same. Turbidity values decrease. E. coli numbers, as an indicator for pat pathogens, decrease. And the benthazone concentration, as an indicator of herbicides, remains the same since degradation does not occur. In order to be able to calculate, for example, the decay of pathogenic microorganisms, it is necessary to determine if a reservoir can be considered to be completely mixed or in plug flow condition. Completely mixed reservoirs are less efficient in the removal of pathogenic microorganisms than plug flow reactors, as can be concluded from the equations. Several completely mixed reactors in series, however, will approach the efficiency of a plug flow. To understand these equations, please do the exercises. Service water after storage needs extensive treatment. Conventionally, the main objectives were to remove turbidity, odor, taste and to disinfect the water. A conventional treatment train consisting of coagulation, where iron or aluminium salts are dosed, flock formation, flock removal, rapid sand filtration and chlorination meets this objective However, in 1973 
the Dutchman Joop Rook discovered that chlorination of natural water results in formation of carcinogenic disinfection byproducts such as trihalomethanes, of which chloroform is the best known. Therefore, at the end of the last century, chlorine was abolished from the conventional water treatment plants in the Netherlands and ozonation was used as alternative disinfection step. In addition, at the end of last century, organic micropollutants such as bentazone were permanently present in the source water. These organic micropollutants were also suspected to have impact on human health. These micropollutants could not be removed by conventional treatment steps and activated carbon filtration was added to the treatment train. Activated carbon absorbed the dissolved organic matter, including pesticides, and removes it from the water phase. An example of such a treatment train is the former treatment system of Bereplaat of drinking water company Evides. As can be observed, the bentazone concentration is removed up to levels below the detection limit. As can be seen, some of the organic matter measured as dissolved organic carbon or DUC is removed as well. With the increasing contamination of the surface water and the improved detection methods, more and more organic marker pollutants are found in the raw waters and even in drinking water. Not all endocrine disrupting compounds are removed by activated carbon absorption. Therefore, alternative treatment methods had to be found. In addition, it was discovered that ozone disinfection, as an alternative for chlorination, also produced the carcinogenic compounds bromate as a byproduct. Finally, several resistant pathogenic microorganisms were identified that were difficult to eliminate with both chlorination and ozonation. One of the developed methods is the advanced oxidation process, or AOP, consisting of a combination of ultraviolet and hydrogen peroxide. In this process, so-called OH radicals are formed that oxidize the organic matter present in the water. In addition, the UV light sterilizes the pathogenic microorganisms so that they cannot reproduce anymore. The first full-scale plant based on UV H2O2 was built by drinking water company PWN in Andijk. Another alternative is the application of membrane filtration. With microfiltration and ultrafiltration, turbidity and pathogenic microorganisms are removed without the use of chlorine, ozone or UV, whereas with nanofiltration and reverse osmosis is it possible to remove the organic micropollutants. Additional advantage of nanofiltration is that the water is partly desalinated and all bivalent ions are removed as well, softening the water. With RO, almost all salts are removed. In the case of surface waters with a little too high levels of salts, NFRO can be applied as a partial treatment as is done in Heemskerk of PWN. During this lecture, I gave an overview over the developments in direct surface water treatment. In the next lectures, we will explain in more detail how to design the individual treatment steps, such as coagulation, sedimentation and rapid scent filtration, the basis of all surface water treatment systems. Don't miss it. See you next time.